So, uh, next question is from Max. And it goes, I need to research a divorce that took place back in 1974. I don't have any records of the divorce. Do I need to include this in my petition? If so, how would I find this paperwork? Okay, I'll take that one. Cool. Um, short answer is there's no getting around providing copies, photocopies of your divorce decree. Um, that means that you're going to have to find those documents or records somehow. Uh, I know I went through a similar process when I brought my wife to the United States and I let my fingers do the walking and, and used a, a favorite tool of mine called Google Maps and I went in, I actually found the courthouse where I thought the final divorce paperwork would be. Um, found out that that courthouse no longer existed but uh, by finding phone numbers I was rerouted and directed to the, the correct courthouse. Um, then I found out the, the court records had moved. Uh, anyway, with a couple of phone calls, I was able to track down the records. So use Google Maps, uh, make phone calls. Um, if you have to uh, even call your, your ex or family members or something, just find out where those records are because you're, you're going to have to have those records. Uh, you know, if the records are not available, um, you can obtain a letter from the courthouse or the clerk recorder. Uh, the records division, wherever they have the records, stating that the records were lost, destroyed. Uh, that's quite common with records, you know, from 30, 40 years ago that some of the courthouses, uh, you know, may have been destroyed. They have floods, fires, things like that. Uh, but the short answer is you've got to get the records. And a lot of folks, a lot of customers will ask us, well, can I go ahead and submit my paperwork now? without the divorce decree and uh, it, it'll not make it through our review process. Uh, we have a very extensive re review process and, and we're not going to submit your paperwork. Our name is on those, those forms and we want to submit the best case possible. So the answer is no, don't ask us to submit it without it. Um, you're, you're just going to get an RFE, a request for evidence or a, or a denial letter. Awesome. I'll add one of the lines I use a lot, uh, especially when dealing with customers is Hey, you want to be as open and transparent as possible when you're dealing with the government and your spouse or fiance that you're petitioning for, because the last thing you want is to try to you know sweep something under the rug and think you'll get away with it, and the next thing you know, they're asking for that divorce decree anyway, or you get a denial and you have to start all over. So it's usually kind of you know put your best foot forward from the beginning, even if it slows you down, because later on it can slow you down even more. You bring up an excellent point. Um, several of our customers, previous customers have uh, tried to do exactly that, <laughs> tried to submit a petition uh, without even you know, mentioning the prior marriages mm -hmm. and divorces. And I'll just be honest and frank with you, the government knows more about us than we know about ourselves and if, if you think you can get this to slide through uh, and go unnoticed, uh, they know about it. Look, your previous spouses were on your record somewhere, whether it be tax um, forms or, or mortgages, uh, there's, there's a paper trail out there, so just don't even try it. The last thing you want to do is to get your loved one, your fiance or spouse banned from the U.S. because um, it's a very serious crime uh, lying on government forms and, and even if you just withhold evidence or information, um, it's, it's, just, it's just wrong, so don't do it.